Hey guys, Mr. Vackerberg here. This is part one of lesson 4.4, titled Trigonometric Functions of Any Angle. Two objectives for this video. We are going to evaluate trig functions of any angle, and then we're gonna find something called reference angles. So just as a quick review, we've already got some definitions for these different trig functions based on our unit circle. So if we're looking at those ordered pairs and we wanted to find the sine of our angle, we'd look at the y value from the ordered pair. Cosine is the x value tangent is y over x, and then we've got all of these reciprocal functions. Well, what we're going to be doing is building some new definitions based on circles that are bigger or maybe even smaller than the unit circle. So these are going to be our new definitions for our trig functions that we're going to use in this section. The only change we're making is we're not dealing with a unit circle anymore. Our circle is going to have a different radius. So here's what we've got. We're going to let theta be an angle in standard position. We're still going to focus on those x and y ordered pairs, which end up being on the terminal side or the ending side of our angle theta. What we're going to have to find is this new r value, which is going to represent the radius of our new circle. And the way we're going to do that is just by using a distance formula type idea or Pythagorean theorem type idea. So if you look at the sign, sine still deals with our y value, but now we're dividing it by r. Cosine still deals with our x value, but we're dividing that one by r. And if we check out those reciprocal functions, we can see that the fractions are just flipped over again. Tangent and cotangent are actually gonna stay the same though. Tangent is still just y over x, cotangent is still just x over y. So in this first example, here's what we know. We know that the ordered pair negative three, four is a point on the terminal side of our angle theta we're gonna figure out what the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle theta would look like. Now in order to do this, we're gonna to need to figure out what that r value is first. So from the last page, we're gonna do the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I guess for our x value, we've got negative three. We're gonna square that, and then we're gonna add on four squared. Well, negative three squared is nine, four squared is 16. Add those up, we're gonna get 25. So our r value is the square root of 25, which is just five. Now if we wanted to do the sine, okay, sine is y over r, so I'm gonna go four over five. If we're doing the cosine of our angle theta, that's gonna be our x value over r, so x value is negative three, r was five, and last one, our tangent of theta is gonna be y over x, so we're gonna go four over negative three. In example two, we've got the ordered pair two, negative three being that point on the terminal side of our angle theta. So again, we're gonna find sine, cosine, and tangent, but we're gonna need that r value first. So I'm gonna go square root of two squared plus negative three squared. Two squared is four, negative three squared is nine, if we add those up, we get the square root of 13. Now this one doesn't break down nicely like the last one did, but that's okay. So if we do the sine of our angle theta this time, we're gonna go with our y value over that r value. But now we've got a radical on the bottom of the fraction, so we're gonna to have to rationalize this thing. So multiply by root 13 on top and bottom. So we get negative three root 13 all over 13 for our sine. As far as the cosine of our angle theta, we're gonna go two over root 13. And again, we'll need to rationalize this thing. So multiply by that square root on top and bottom. And we get two root 13 all over 13. And last one, our tangent value. We're gonna go with our y value over the x value. No rationalizing we need to do here. It's just negative three halves. Now the signs of our trig functions are gonna change depending on what quadrant we're working in. And by the signs, I mean whether these things are positive or negative. So if we're looking in the first quadrant, all of these things, sine, cosine, and tangent, are gonna be positive because both the x and the y values are positive there. But if we move into that second quadrant, we'll notice that the sine is still positive because we're above the x-axis. Those y values are still positive but the cosine or those x values are now negative since we're moving into that second quadrant. And since one of these things is negative, that's also gonna make our tangent negative. If we move down into that third quadrant, both the x and y are negative, so sine is gonna be negative, cosine is gonna be negative. 
but as soon as we make a fraction out of those things, two negatives make our tangent positive. In the fourth quadrant, we've got a negative y value, making the sine negative, but a positive x value. So the cosine is positive. And again, if we're mixing these signs here, a positive and a negative, we're going to get a negative tangent answer. Now, there is kind of an easier, helpful way to remember where our specific trig functions are going to be positive. Now, if we're in the first quadrant, we just pretty much have to know that all of them are positive. But as we move into the second quadrant, well, second starts with an S and sine starts with an S. So sine is going to be positive in the second. Now this just tells us which ones are positive. So since sine is positive in the second, that would mean that cosine and tangent are both negative. Moving into that third quadrant, well, third starts with a T and tangent starts with a T. So tangent is positive in the third. Moving into that fourth quadrant, well, we don't have a trig function that starts with F, so I'm going to call this one quadrant quattro. And quattro starts with a C, and cosine starts with a C. So cosine is positive in the fourth. Taking a look at these next couple examples, they're going to be similar to those problems that we were working on earlier, but instead of being given an ordered pair and asked to find some trig values, we're actually given one of the trig values and a little bit more information, and we're going to use that to help us find other trig values. So in this one, we've got that the tangent of our angle theta is negative 5 fourths, and the cosine of theta is going to be a positive value. It says it's bigger than zero, so that means it's positive. We want to figure out what the sine and the secant are going to look like. Now, I'm focusing on this second piece right here where it says that the cosine is positive. There's only two quadrants where that happens. The first quadrant, because everything is positive in the first, and the fourth quadrant because the whole quattro cosine thing. Now, in order for us to have a negative tangent value, we have to be working in quadrant four. If this was a positive tangent value, then we'd be in quadrant one because everything is positive in one, but negative tangent means that we have to be in the fourth quadrant. So I'm actually gonna draw a picture to help me out. We're looking at a fourth quadrant angle and when I draw this out, I want my angle theta to be the one right next to the origin. Now thinking about how we build a tangent fraction. Okay, Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we've got this 5 on top and the 4 on bottom. Now don't worry about that negative sign yet. We'll get there in just a minute. Opposite side is 5. Adjacent side is 4. Since we're working in the fourth quadrant, this vertical side heading down, or the 5 here, is the one that has to be negative. Now we can look at this as a right triangle. We've got a missing side of a right triangle, so we could just use the Pythagorean theorem to help us out. So I'm going to go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we've got 4 squared plus negative 5 squared equals our c squared value. Well, 4 squared is 16, negative 5 squared is 25. That's our c squared. If we add those up, we get 41, and we'll have to square root that. So our missing c value is the square root of 41. Now we can use this triangle here to build our other trig values. Our sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we're doing the sine of our angle theta, the opposite is negative 5. We just found that hypotenuse to be the square root of 41. We're going to have to rationalize this thing, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 41. So we get negative 5 root 41 all over 41. Now if we're doing the secant of our angle theta, while well, secant is related to cosine, cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, but this is a reciprocal function, so I'm going to go hypotenuse over adjacent, so square root of 41 over 4. Taking a look at our next example, we've got the sine of theta being 4 fifths, and we're told that our tangent is less than 0 or negative. So if we're thinking about where that sine is positive but tangent is negative, well, sine is positive in the first and second, tangent is negative, so we have to be working in the second quadrant. So again, I'm going to draw a picture over here. For the sine, we've got our opposite value over our hypotenuse, so I'm going to go 4 over 5. Now we're going to have to figure out this missing side of our triangle, so again, we're going to use that Pythagorean theorem to help us out. So I'm going to go a squared plus b squared equals our c squared value, so we've got 16 plus b squared equals 25. 
Subtracting the 16 over, we've got b squared equals 9, and square root that, we've got b equals 3. But we have to remember that we're in the second quadrant, and this x value going left means that it's actually a negative 3. So now, if we want to find the cosine value, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And as far as the cosecant goes, well, all we have to do is flip over the sine fraction. So the cosecant of theta is going to be 5 over 4. Last thing we're talking about in this video are things called reference angles. So we're going to let theta be an angle in standard position, like we always do. Its reference angle is going to be a small acute angle, which we're going to call theta prime. That little apostrophe thing above the theta means prime. And the way we're going to make these reference angles is we're going to be taking a look at the small acute angle that's formed by the ending side of our angle theta and the closest horizontal axis. And there's actually three ways we're going to go about doing this depending on where our angle is located. So take a look at this first picture that's on the left hand side here. If our angle lands us in the second quadrant, which is just a little bit smaller than pi, in order to figure out what this reference angle is going to look like, we're going to take pi and subtract off whatever angle theta that is. Now if we're dealing in degrees, just remember that pi is the same thing as 180, so we would take 180 minus whatever that angle theta is. Now if theta is a little bit bigger and takes us into that third quadrant, we just flip things around a little bit. So now theta is bigger than pi, so in order to find this acute angle, we would have to take theta minus pi, or theta minus 180 if we were in degrees. Last one is if our angle theta takes us into the fourth quadrant, then our nearest horizontal axis is actually this two pi angle. So in order to figure out what our theta prime is, we're gonna take two pi and subtract off theta, or in degrees again, 360 minus theta. So in this last example, we're gonna look at finding some reference angles. First one we're gonna look at is 213 degrees. Now this is close to 180, but a little bit too big. So I'm gonna go 213 minus 180, and when we do that, we should get 33 degrees. So 33 degrees is our reference angle theta prime. Taking a look at our next one, this one's in radians. We've got three pi over four. Again, that's really close to pi, but this time it's a little bit too small. So we're gonna take pi minus three pi over four. In order to subtract these fractions, we're gonna need common denominators. So I'm gonna make this four pi over four. And then if we carry out our subtraction, four pi minus three pi is one pi, and the denominator stays the same. Last example, again, close to 180, but too small. So I'm gonna go 180 minus 144, and this time we get a 36 degree reference angle. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.